possibly be moving that fast. Last time on Mysterious Island. I think we may safely assume we've been nominated to fish scapegoats. Only tin up can lead us home. Will you allow us to help you? How is it talking about their map? East takes west or something. She doesn't understand it. You see how they guard it? It's the most precious thing in the world to them. If you think we're just going to pack up and slink away, you're very much mistaken. He's learned the meaning of the map. You are a chief. We promise to give our position if they meet anyone that might rescue us. Not of the sunlight, not of the moon, not of the starlight. Oh, young man, down to the haven, launch your vessel. Dear lady, I am dreadfully sorry for causing you any alarm. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Peter. You will unhand her. I'm Joanna. And I'm Cyrus Harding. I see by your clothing you're a military man, Cyrus. Not anymore. <laughs> First name basis, right off the bat, hmm? Presumptuous sort of a fellow, aren't you? I meant no offense. It's just that as I heard the American accent, I perhaps incorrectly assumed a certain informal approach would be all right. A correct assumption indeed. Tattoos are nice, aren't they? Oh, yes. I'm Herbert. Pleased to meet you. And you, sir. You have the same accent as the man who taught me to speak English. He studied at Oxford. And by your manner, I would say I have the pleasure of being in the presence of a proper English gentleman. Yes. Well. And my name is Tu Haryana Manat Rewa Teatafayar. But for those of us who are not quite up on our South Pacific languages, Peter will be fine. Now then, you all seem like a shipwrecked bunch, don't you? You could say that. And what about you? Oh, I have been sent here for the purposes of a spiritual quest. To spend some time alone, away from my tribe. Then they'll be coming back? Yes. 
You mean we could be rescued? Oh, my stay here will be for about one month. And although I don't believe there will be any room for anyone on the returning canoe, well, if I speak to my elders, we could send another one for you. <laughs> Hooray. We're going to be saved. I noticed three crosses on my way here. Has there been a tragedy? Three have died, including my husband, Herbert's father. It's the worst kind of loss. My late wife made this for me. It is a tragedy. She will not be there for me when I return. And how did you lose your wife, Peter? I, uh... Peter, I, uh... you must be tired. We should make a place for you to sleep. Yes. Perhaps by the kiln. Outside. <laughs> I hardly think that would be hospitable. You could use Neb's old space. That's, uh... That's directly beneath where Joanna sleeps. We must have spill it. Are you suggesting that my snoring will keep Joanna awake? That's quite decent of you. It's a wonderful idea, Herbert. Is there anything you need, Peter? Oh, uh, no. Uh, my sleeping mat is all the comfort I'll require, dear lady. Your hospitality overwhelms me. I'm not at all sure about this, Harding. We shouldn't be so easy with our hospitality. Well, look what happened last time we were hospitable to a group of natives. Besides, I think the man's a fraud. He's not the most believable person I've ever come across. But it's not his island roots. It's the upper-class English accent and manners that I don't trust. <laughs> These last few days have been most valuable to me, Joanna. There's nothing quite like spending time with someone who understands. Yes. I think Herbert's feeling a little left out, though. Yes. Yes, you're right. Well, that's not going to go far, is it? Especially now we have somewhat of a permanent guest. I know. I wonder if it's possible that I've fished out my usual spot. Well, I can't believe that all the fish have gone. But perhaps they have lost their desire to be caught. <laughs> oh, please. Would you like me to show you how we fish on my island? Now? Good thing. Now, this way of fishing takes a lot of patience, but it's worthwhile in the end. My father took me this way. You learn a lot from your fathers. Bravery, how to fight it and win. You must miss your father. Yes. Do you make him proud? Oh, I don't know about that. But do you try? My father was a very hard man to please. He hated weakness. Certainly loved sailing, though. When my mother died, he was miles away on a ship. So Joanna isn't your real mother? No. Your father was a sailor? Mm-hmm. I've always been in awe of the European method of sailing, to battle the elements until you win. Mm. Your father must have been a great man to be able to do that. My people have been sailors for centuries. But we accept the elements of the sea and take advantage of their force to get us around the Pacific. Sounds more sensible. Which is how you got here after all, flying along with the elements. Fantastic story. Yes, without a happy ending. Well, you never know. Get some fish. What do you think? It's not bad for a beginner, is it? 
I think it's very good. <laughs> you and Herbert seem quite taken with Peter's approach to things. Almost as taken as our Peter is with Joanna. Gideon, Peter's been nothing if not kind and open and generous. You're only too happy to let him catch fish for your dinner. At the same time, you make insulting remarks behind his back. I take umbrage at that. I've been perfectly insulting to his face. And as peculiar face as I've ever seen. Can't imagine what it must be like having a painted face like that. Well, as unusual as his facial and bodily markings are to us, I'm sure that they're as important to his spiritual and cultural life as, say, uh, the badges on a military uniform. When is he going to get down to doing whatever it was he came here to do? Spiritual quest? Has he been out of our sight since he got here? I don't believe you two. Peter's a lovely man. And I think his tattoos are beautiful. I'm delighted you appreciate my ukutu. <clears throat> Herbert's been telling me you're an expert on hurt, and I was wondering if you could help me compare notes. Well, I'm hardly an expert, Peter, but I'd be delighted. Come sit down. How did you catch all those? Ah, Peter showed me a great new way to fish. He sure knows a lot. Did he say any more about his plans? When he's going to get started on his business here? Anything like a schedule? No. He says our concept of time has no relevance here. Honey, we really must have words with this man. Peter, what do you want done with all these fish? Oh, you're cooking tonight, Peter. Hmm. Yes. Well, I'm not hungry. Oh, I have a herb that would bring back your appetite if you would like to try some. No, I suppose not. Pity, though. This is going to be more than an ordinary meal. It will be a special dinner, prepared for the spiritual needs of all of us individually. I'll have any, thanks. Well, nobody's forcing you to eat. All the more for the rest of us. It looks delicious. Hey, Gideon, there's a piece of old dried fish in the fireplace if you get hungry later. The rats don't get it first. <laughs> Gideon, I'll sit on the side, and if you feel up to eating it, then you can. Yes, yeah, well, perhaps later. So, Peter, what's your next step? Going out into the hills tomorrow to do some meditating? Oh, I don't know whether tomorrow is the best time or not. Uh, well, I'm off to bed. Good night. How can you tell if tomorrow will be good or bad? That's something I won't be able to tell until tomorrow. What manner of spiritual quest are you on exactly? I can't discuss that with you. <laughs> How convenient. All seems pretty straightforward to me. There's a some primitive secret ritual we wouldn't understand. There's a bit like the Masons or something. All very hush hush, very mum. It's excellent fish, Peter, by the way. Oh, Cyrus, the man's just cooked us the best meal we've had since coming to the island. We're turning it into the Inquisition. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just interested. No, that's all right. Please. Let okay. me clean up. All right. Good night. Good night. I'll help you.
Good morning. Sleep well? Yes. Yes, I did, actually. Yes. I think everyone. <laughs> I'll say. Well, that's the best night's sleep I've had in a long time. Me too. I had the most amazing dreams. Very vivid. So did I. I dreamt I was... We were drowning, but... But there was no pain. Sleep well. Yes. Wonderfully. Thank you. Pleasant dreams. Actually, we were just talking about that. Are you married, Cyrus? Yes. Yes, I am. Why do you ask? No reason other than polite conversation. Do you have any children? Yes, two daughters, Jennifer and Mary. I'm sorry about that. About what? There's nothing to apologize for. I thought I'd put you on the spot asking about your wife. Probably not a good thing to mention in front of Joanna. Why not? course. A gentleman with a wife and children would never give a thought to other women, even under such extreme circumstances as these. From the smallest seeds spring the most insidious vines, which, if kept unchecked, run rampant through the entire garden, entangling every plant in its path. Well, what have we got planned for today? Peter's offered to take me gathering herbs. So you've deferred your spiritual odyssey once again. Unusual for you to take an interest in such things, Cyrus. Are you ready, Peter? Yes. I should come with you. What for, Gideon? Help you carry them. Uh, and how much do you think a small bunch of herbs might weigh? True, Peter. But, uh... It might be best if two of us learned something of your knowledge of herbs, hmm? I assure you there'll be no need for a chaperone. I shall behave as a perfect English gentleman. Why don't you gather some wood? Weed the garden. Plenty of chores for you to do. We should do something. What about? That's the first time Joanna's been off alone with Peter. She is an adult. She's free to make her own decisions. What decisions? Any decisions she likes. Who to go picking herbs with. Come, come Harding, I think there's a little more on the menu today than herbs, don't you? I think it's time we let that subject drop. about the ways of your people. Courtship and marriage, if you like. My child is another man who is an interesting fresh plant. A man who wishes to court, does so by making beautiful floral things for her to wear. I think it's not just in flowers that things change after marriage. But I shouldn't be telling you this. Why not? In your culture. Do the young men do all the running about and waiting after the young ladies' hands and foot? That can happen. And then marriage. Suddenly the woman finds she's expected to do some chores. All of the chores in most cases. <laughs> We're not such different people. No. Here. Oh, it's beautiful. I feel like the queen of the island. 
<laughs> much too pretty to be a queen. <laughs> I was, uh... You were what? I was c collecting... F firewood. Right. <laughs> Tell me about your tattoos. Oh, well, where to start? Um, most of genealogy. Uh, others are acknowledgments of manhood. <laughs> All the men in my tribe have them. You have to pass certain tests to be allowed to have particular parts. Some tests in uh, hunting, fishing, building, and navigation. What's that one? Mm. Oh, that's a fishing tattoo. It represents a shark. Mm. And that is the family mark of my mother. Would you like one? Women don't wear tattoos. On the contrary, all the women on my island have one. Not quite like mine, but um, smaller, more delicate. You're an island woman, then. <laughs> and most definitely the most beautiful one on the island. <laughs> well, now I know you've been teasing me. No, Joy. Not at all. I, I could do you a tattoo. I have the skill. See? There's my mark to prove it. Do they feel rough on your skin? See for yourself. I think we should stop this. What do you mean? All of this. I think it's wrong. Are you concerned about the others? No, it's not that. It's just... I don't know. I have no wish to cause you any anguish, John. Exactly why were you climbing out over the water? Harding, I've really no wish to discuss the matter any further. Abby, what are you up to? <sighs> Joanna? Gillian? Peter? Where did Herbert go? Herbert, are you there? What's wrong? I'll be fishing. Gideon, can I have a word, please? Yes, of course. Gideon, it's bad enough that you decide to spy on me. But then to give Herbert some false impression of what you saw is beyond the pale. I assure you, Joanna, I have said nothing to Herbert. Or Harding. It's embarrassing enough without having them know as well. Well, you should be embarrassed by what you did. If you ever do anything like this again, I won't be nearly so nice about it. Why shouldn't I be? I suppose any kindness I show towards Peter offends you too, does it? No. 
But I'd be curious to know if you've discovered anything at all about his real intentions here. His intentions here are his business, not yours or anyone else's. Cyrus, what's the matter with you? Just because he's a little different looking, everyone suddenly becomes completely intolerant. Why? Surely you of all people should know better than that. Look, I don't know what you want, but I can do just fine here without you. I have no doubt that you can. And I can see you've returned to the traditional approach to fishing here. Why are you here? We're friends now. You're troubled, and I'm interested in how I might be able to help you get over your troubles. That's what friends do. Very well. I saw you. The two of you by the river. My father's been gone less than three months and she was touching you. You were... I was telling Joanna how women from my island also have tattoos and that I could do one for her too. What you saw was your mother checking how skin feels when it's been tattooed. Now, haven't you been a little interested in my tattoos yourself? Yes, but I... I didn't know she was. She's interested in many things, as you are. But, as for any feelings she may have towards me, or that I may have for her, it is really none of your business. Just as the things that I share with you are nobody else's business. And while we may have our doubts about him, I imagine he has quite a few about us, too. Do I hear open-minded intelligence creeping into our midst? I'm sorry about how I acted earlier. Peter's right. You are the most beautiful woman, but not just on the island. <laughs> and if you really want one, I think you should have a tattoo. Really. All right. I'll help you find the plants for the dye. We'll do it first thing in the morning. a bit. Who's next? Well, I think it's barbaric, really. Well, interesting, I admit, but why would you put yourself through pain for something like that? Well, I definitely want one. There you are. All finished. Take a look. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yes, Peter. It is beautiful. In its own way. And how else can it be beautiful but in its own way? Well, I mean, it's unique. The English language can be so precise sometimes and so fuzzy other times. Well, Shakespeare being the greatest artist of both the precise and imprecise, do you agree? Well, yes, I suppose that's true. Absolutely. Now, what about my tattoo? Can I have one? Just as a woman's tattoo is earned through motherhood, a man's tattoo must also be earned. There are a number of tests of manhood which you must pass before you can have yours. They're not dangerous, are they? Just tell me what we're 
we're going and what I have to do. This trial isn't too fast. So if I tell you what they are, you may not want to do either. <laughs> well, how tough can they be? We've talked enough. It's time to begin. Begin what? This is part one. I'll meet you at the top. Fantastic. <laughs> hey. What are you doing? The next part involves you trusting me with your very life. Well, of course I trust you. Didn't I just scale a cliff to prove it? You scaled a cliff to prove your faith in yourself. The next part will prove your trust in me. Are you prepared to do that? Look, maybe I don't really need a tattoo. It's far too late for that, Herbert. Far too late. Hold this. Fight. And don't let go. <laughs> I'm sure Herbert will be fine. Why wouldn't he be? Peter wouldn't harm Herbert. Do you still not trust this man? Joanna, do you know anything at all about primitive rights? This is Peter we're talking about. He wouldn't put Herbert in any danger. Well, it is a rite of passage. I would imagine there would have to be some danger. Exactly. I think we're talking about something a little more than just being blooded on the rugby field. Peter! Let the rope slowly to your hand. There's no coming back. Have faith. Walk all the way down. It was amazing. Did he just call us by our Christian names? What's in the name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo and Juliet. Got it in one. Actually, I was wondering if you could enlighten me as to the context of some of Shakespeare's earlier sonnets. <sighs> the sonnets. The Dark Lady, hmm? Well, I may be able to help there. I certainly would enjoy the discussion. Why won't you tell me what happened? It's just something I can't tell anyone. It's a private matter, and that's that. Cyrus, later I'll show you how to fish on this island. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever else I might think about Peter, he's certainly been very good for Herbert. Well, I think you're right about Herbert. I'm not sure about the whatever else. Well, I'm just not convinced that he is what he appears to be. He could be playing with us, carrying favor for some other purpose. People who behave as he does are either saints or shysters. Somehow, I don't think he's a saint. You're being ridiculous. Maybe, but I think that time will bear me out. He'll do something out of character soon, I feel sure of it. Something like what? Well, has he mentioned anything lately about when he's leaving? Or getting us rescued? No, I thought not. Cyrus, are you jealous? I certainly had no intention of giving that impression. Why would I be jealous of your innocent friendship with Peter? Yes. Yes, exactly.
How's this? Well, let's see. Ah, oh, yes. Great. Let's carve them as a dish fit for the gods. Uh, Julius Caesar, spot on. Fine feast in the offing, I see. Uh -huh. Yes, well, tis a foul cook who cannot lick his own fingers. Twelfth night? Romeo and Juliet. Blast. Hmm. Just in time, as usual. Ah. And thus the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I meant I've just finished carrying these rocks up from the beach. Oh. Well, I, um... I would have helped you had I known. Of course. Oh, no. Now, that's all a part of your hunting and cooking initiation. That's why I didn't help you. Part of the rites? Rather involved, aren't they? Well done, Herbert. Keep it up. Uh, is that part of the rites, too? Well, no, not exactly. Friends may help with that. Good. Well, thank you for your kind offer, Gideon. It appears you can help me after all. Uh, what with? Well, with what the rocks are for. That is what you were interested in, wasn't it? Um, the whole Gideon. Just over there, right next to the fire. Now, broad enough and deep enough to bury this beast and all of those rocks. Bury it? <laughs> but I had rather thought we were going to, um, eat it. <laughs> yes, well, we're going to cook it first. Start digging and all will be revealed. Right. <laughs> Quite unique. Method of cooking a large amount of food which creates an appetite to match. Well, I'd hate to see your appetite if you actually did some digging. <laughs> well done, Herbert. Thank you. You approve? Of course. He's learning some very useful skills and enjoying himself. I'm glad. Well, thank you. Herbert, uh, go and get some more alalawa leaves. Another four will do, and hurry. Right. I've probably been too hard on you. You've done nothing but good for us, and yet I've been suspicious. By the time you've arranged our rescue, I will certainly be feeling very foolish. Don't be too hard on yourself, Cyrus. Suspicion is a perfectly natural instinct. If it's anything like the first meal you prepared for us, I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Well, this will be better than that, Cyrus, I can assure you. That was a meal. This will be a feast. So is this just for Herbert's rite of passage? Or is it also part of your spiritual quest somehow? Yes, it is for Herbert. And for us, too, to join with him in celebration. I see. So if this isn't part of the work that you're really here to do, what is? Joanna? Is she part of your quest here? We obviously still have some way to go before we can trust and share like brothers. I'm prepared for that to take some time. How much time have you got? You've been here a month. I recall you're saying that your stay would be for just that long. Something like that. Island time is not so precise. Not so precise. Oh, we do things differently. You wouldn't understand. Honey. No. If we are to talk this through, then let's do it now. Rather that than upsetting Joanna with your disagreeable frame of mind. Of course. You wouldn't want to be exposed as a fake in her presence, would you? I don't think there's any chance of that. Look, let's all try to get on, shall we? After all, it is Herbert's day. All right. Tell me about your work, in terms that I might be able to understand. I don't think you're in the mood to understand anything. Oh, so it's my mood that's the problem now. There are things that cannot be understood between cultures. Maybe. All right, I'll settle for when. When, in the last four weeks, have you done the spiritual things that you came here to do? When you have been elsewhere, sometimes during the day, sometimes during the night. I have done many things of which you have been unaware. This is a sacred island to my people. Our spiritual task is set for us after we arrive. I expected to find an uninhabited island, but I found you. And 
helping you became my task. Helping us? Just exactly in what way do you think you have helped us? Please, hear me out. Gideon, I found in you a man of great intelligence and sensitivity. But a man who judged by what he saw. I believe you have started to see differently now. The fool. Yes. Yes, I suppose you're right. Herbert, I found in you the struggle of youth. Terribly, desperately wanting to become a man. You may not have your tattoo yet, but have you not begun to feel like a man? I have. Thank you. Joanna, I really do care for you deeply, and I would love to stay here with you, but that is not possible. I hope you will understand. You were grieving for your husband, not quite feeling a woman. I hope you're more open to the idea of being able to love again for its own sake rather than for any other reason. Have these people gotten to you? Have you forgotten who your master is and why you're here? Cyrus, it might be appropriate if we have a word in private. Now, nothing actually happened between Joanna and I. I realize that. So why were you trying to suggest that it had? I was hoping to help you come to terms with your own feelings towards Joanna. Well, I didn't need your help, and I certainly didn't ask for it. Yes, you're right. Then I owe you an apology. And I you. You know, when it comes to the relationships between men and women, it's better to let things take their own course. How long before you come back for us? I'll have to speak to our elders. Sorry to see him go. Yes. An enlightening chap. Stimulating company. Well, interesting at least. His views on literature, hardly sophisticated, but very interesting. Well, well, Mr. War Correspondent. You can be an unpredictable chap. It's time I got to know you better. Time to settle some old scores. Well, how long? 